Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with German jazz organist Barbara Danerlein. We talked to her on April 20th, 2020 from her base in Munich, Germany about this new COVID-19 lockdown world and so much more, like her latest 2019 CD, Best of the Blues. Over the years, her CDs have won numerous awards and she has gone on to become quite a name in the world of jazz, traveling the world and delighting crowds. Please get to know her. Well, hey, thank you for taking some time out. Where exactly are you? Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm fine so far. <laughs> Good deal. Where, where exactly are you located? Munich. Yeah. Bavaria. Right on. Very good. Well, hey, thanks again. And um, just kind of want to talk to you a little bit about um, maybe what you have been doing since you've been in quarantine and you haven't been able to perform live. Yeah. You know, um, well, uh, of course, no gigs. No concerts, which is really uh, kind of frustrating, especially as we don't know how long this will go on. Um, well, you, I'm using the time as good as I can. I have to practice, and I'm composing, and I'm recording some things, and um, yeah, it's always a lot of uh, work to do. I'm working on my website, and a lot of things. Office work is going on because I'm organizing my concerts and things like that. Mostly for next year, now of course. <laughs> yeah. So, talk to me a little bit about. You were born in Munich, and you you fell in love with sound at an early age. Talk to me about how jazz became your life and kind of your childhood. Yeah, well, you know, um, I was uh, 11 years old when I uh, presented my first um, little organ. It was a Christmas gift from my grandfather, and uh, my parents have always been jazz fans, and so my father... Um, he played piano, um, and, but he wanted to play jazz music. He was at the conservatory in Munich, and they didn't allow him to play jazz music at that time. So my, my uh, parents were big jazz fans, and I think um, because they were always listening to a lot of jazz music, and especially Hammond organ, which my father loved very much, um, that was an influence for me, but I didn't know that um, it, the whole situation changed when I um, uh, was presented this little organ, not yet a Hammond organ, but just a little electronic organ, no foot pedals yet. Um, and it was under the Christmas tree as a surprise present for me when I was 11 years old. That was in 1975. And I immediately fell in love with that instrument. It was my first instrument, and I always say it, it was love with the first tone, in a way. And um, we were looking for a teacher, and by, just by chance, we found a teacher which was very difficult in uh, Germany at that time. Um, and he had the old Hammond organ B3, that's the model I'm playing nowadays, um, and uh, so I first heard this sound from my former teacher, um, and I, I really fell in love with the sound of the old electromagnetic Hammond organ. And um, I didn't know about my love for jazz music, but um, I started to play, and then I, uh, I heard jazz music in the radio late at night. And I got very excited, and I want to play, wanted to play that. And my teacher, just by chance, played uh, jazz standards on the Hammond organ, and that's how I got in touch with with all of that. And so, uh, in the same time, when I started learning to play the instrument, um, you know, playing the typical organ schools, um, the books, the uh, um, teaching books. Um, in the same time, I started to learn some jazz uh, standards, and um, the good thing was that my teacher allowed me to do so, and I learned very, very fast. And after two and a half years, I quit, and from that time onwards, I've been working as autodidact, so that means self-taught. So... Talk to me about your beginnings. You've had a really long jazz road up to this point. Talk to me about how everything began for you. Well, 
as I said, I started when I was 11 and I, I played already my first concert when I was, first concert when I was about 13. And um, then with, when I was 15, I got my first um, engagement in a jazz club in Munich where I played uh, during my school holidays. Um, a lot, um, mostly two weeks in a row, every night, four sets from nine to one a.m. <laughs> so that was a great experience for me, and I learned a lot. And I already had my my band, my drummer, I played with. Uh, and when I was eighteen, I made my with, in Germany with a uh, abitur, which is kind of uh, A level, uh, um, and I immediately started. Uh, going on on tour on the road when I was um, 18 and I had finished my school and um, I had organized everything already and, and that's how it got started and then it, it happened all very very fast and um, I got more and more well known and um, people loved my music and my playing and I, I from that time onwards I'm on tour until nowadays. And um, then uh, if you were asking about the recordings, this is another thing. Um, I did my first recording in 1983. That was when I made my final uh, school um, year. Um, and uh, I was looking for record companies who, uh, which wanted to publish my music and give me a chance to, to um, produce uh, records. So vinyl at the time, at that time, of course. Um, and I didn't find anyone. So I just decided to found my own um, label, which is Bebop Records. I founded that. Um, and since then, I have my own label, and I uh, recorded my first um, LP uh, at that time, Biba, that was the title of the LP, with my quintet, with three horn players and a drummer. And um, it got a, a very uh, a great uh, prize in Germany, which is the uh, uh, German Record Critics Prize. And um, then other labels um, got interested, and, and Enya, Enya Records, which is um, quite famous independent label, they um, contacted me and they invited me to record. And um, at the same time, uh, you might know Peter Herbertheimer, he is a very famous um, big band leader, and he has uh, always a lot of uh, different big bands. And he invited me to play with his big band and do a recording on his label with a big band. And that's how how everything got started. And on Encha, I did three recordings. At the same time, I also produced my recordings on my own label, Bebop Records, which I kept until today. Also, at the time when I was um, with Birth Records, Universal, I did uh, three recordings for Verb after my Enjoy period, and yeah, so that's and then I, I I'm on MP, have been on MPS. That was my last um, cooperation. Um, MPS belongs to Edel, and I did a, a I think very nice Christmas recording with a jazzy Christmas songs. Wonderful. So, what do you like best about being a musician? Well, I love. The music, I love jazz music, and um, this is the music where you can be as free uh, in any uh, direction, and, and this gives, it, because you can improvise, it gives you so much freedom, and um, this is what I love uh, when I play jazz music, and uh, plus, for me, composing is very important, because I always felt that I want to play um, different things on the Hammond organ than uh, other famous organ players did. Um, besides, I have, of course, a big respect for them, but I, I always had my own uh, style and my own music in mind. And so that was very important for me. And I love just being a musician and playing for an audience. And I'm so happy. And, and thankful that there is a quite big audience who, who really likes what I do. And, um, well, this is kind of being in heaven to be able to play your own music with great musicians, if you like. 
and um, to find an audience who loves what you do. So this is the best profession, I mean, <laughs> to do something uh, which is your passion. So we will get to a point where we're out of quarantine and we have live music. What do you hope both the musician and the audience realizes from this time away? Uh, well, I hope, uh, because we all don't know how this is continuing, and um, the uh, very sad thing is that a lot of people will have problems continuing with their business, and we don't know how jazz promoters um, can still promote music and, and uh, have a um, concert, because we don't know if they have enough money or if they can get the sponsors. So it's a very difficult situation, so nobody really knows how it will continue. But I really hope is that the audience, the people, just come and, and uh, visit uh, the concerts and, and listen to the music and support the artists and the promoters in that way. I mean, that would really help so much because we don't know if people might be still afraid to go to concerts or on the other hand it could be that they are really hungry <laughs> because they could not go to concerts all the time so they really like to go now uh, after that time we don't know we will see but i really hope that the people come uh, um, really in, in, in big numbers and, and uh, because that's the only way to support the musicians and the uh, promoters Hey, Barbara, thank you for taking some time out for Neon Jazz today. I really appreciate it. Well, my pleasure. I hope my answers were what you expected. <laughs> yeah, they were great. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Germany, the United States, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Barbara for her time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.